In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to import animated assets. Alright, so now that we've learned how to import assets um, into Stingray, let's talk about importing animated assets. So animated assets are probably going to be things like your characters, you might have weapons and things like that that, that have animated clips uh, tied to those. So as you can see, I've already imported a couple of other characters just to get things moving along a little bit faster. Um, but I want to show you how to import our main character. So let's go to the characters folder. Let's right click and create a new folder. And we're going to call this cat underscore foo. With that created, let's go into the cat foo folder. And we're going to right click and we're going to import assets. Now in the assets folder, you'll see models, characters, and cat foo. You'll see that we have a catfoo.fbx file, and then we have catfoo idle, punch A, punch B, and run. We want to bring in the catfoo.fbx file first, because this is what we're going to use to get our mesh, to get our skeleton, and the materials and textures. So select it and hit open. Now whenever the FBX import options come up, we want to make sure that we have unit mesh and materials selected, Make sure that you have textures, create a textures file folder, create an extra root, and then your camera level of detail and lights. Now under the animation, I do want this to be activated, but I do not want to import any clips or animations. So we have our new skeleton, and we need to give that skeleton a name. So I'm going to do catfu underscore dot, uh, let's see, underscore skltn for skeleton, just so that way I can see it very easily. Let's go ahead and hit import, and you'll see that the character comes in, and it looks like he's in an idle position, but it shouldn't be that way. Um, let's wait for that to update. It should be in the M pose. So there we go. Uh, he snapped to the M pose. Let's go ahead and update our thumbnail. And there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to import his animations. This is very easy too. All we'll do is right click import asset and let's select the idle through run let's open that and instead of importing the unit mesh and materials again let's turn that off because we already have that we just want to import the clips so under animation we want to make sure that we have a target skeleton selected and we're going to select the cat foo skeleton and then we're going to import the clips and with that we want to create an animation folder just simply hit import and it's going to bring all of those files in and it's going to put it right inside of our animations folder. So here you can go ahead and preview the different animations that we have for the character. Perfect. So now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and talk about creating an animation controller. So to do this, we'll right click on our catfoo skeleton and we'll create animation controller. Let's rename it to catfoo underscore AC. Now you'll see that the catfoo underscore AC file is now inside of our catfoo folder. So double click on it and it will bring up our anim controller window. Now if you don't have that, um, simply go to window and then um, you'll see animation anim controller. It will come up as a floating window so you could go ahead and dock it right up here at the top. So now that we have this all set up, you'll see that we are looking at our base layer, okay? And inside the base layer, we have this empty state. An empty state is going to be there by default. It's just uh, empty, it doesn't do anything. It's waiting for some event to happen. So what do we do at this point? Well, we go ahead and we start adding in our clips, our animation clips, and start setting up what's called transitions. So to get started with this, let's right click in our graph space and let's choose clip state. Let's give it a new name and we're going to call this idle underscore state. Now you'll see that we're getting an error on this. It's saying uh, what clip state? We don't have an animation defined. So let's go ahead and hit add clip and we'll choose catfoo underscore idle. So now that that has been updated, we'll just simply hit save and refresh. Now, right now, you'll see that the preview has gone back to the M pose. So, what's going on? Well, what's happening is that the empty state is still the default state. 
So let's select the idle state and let's go, actually we need to select the base layer here and you'll see default state is set to empty. So it's automatically going to here instead of the idle state. So let's switch it. Update and refresh and there we go. You could go ahead and select the empty state and delete it now if you like. Now let's add one more clip state and we're going to call this run underscore state. Oops, let me try it one more time. Rename that. There we go. Let's add the clip and let's save and refresh. So now we have two clips and now what we want to do is we want to go from the idle to the run whenever the player presses input or something like that. So what we need to do now is create transitions between these two states. To create a transition, you'll simply left click on the transition or the clip state that you want to go from and we want to transition to. So left click on the one that you want to transition to. Now you'll see that this transition has been created, but it's saying that there's no event tied to it. So where do we get these events? We can create events by right clicking on anim events and adding a new one. Let's give it a new name and let's call this run event because it's going to the run state. Now if we select that transition, we can change the on event. So we're going to type in run event there and you'll see that it's now hooked up and when, whenever we hit save and refresh, you'll see that the event comes up here. Let's create one more event or transition going from run to idle because we want to be able to let go of the thumbstick and the character go back to his idle state. So let's create another anim event and we're going to call this idle underscore event. There we go. So now let's select that transition and change it to idle event. So now we've created a loop between idle and run. If we save this and refresh it, we can get a little bit of a preview of what these transitions will look like by clicking on these buttons underneath the animation controller preview. So if I click on run event, you'll see that it goes into the run and it continues to loop through until another event happens. So let's say in our code, we let go of the thumbstick, it's gonna go back to the event or the idle event. And then if we press on it again, it'll go back to run. Okay, so you get a little bit of a preview of how that animation controller is going to work. Now we'll get a little bit more in depth with this and we'll be coming back to it whenever we start um, coding our character. But before we begin coding and, and getting that ready, we need a level for our character to run in. So in the next lesson, we're going to talk about um, some level creation techniques here inside of Stingray and how to get started with that.